If you've used Sansa Query, you know that maintaining type safety with query keys is a little bit cumbersome. If you want to update the cache data of a query or invalidate a query, you need to pass in a query key. So I came across this library called Query Key Factory, and it aims to simplify that for you. So focus on writing and invalidating queries without the hassle of remembering how you have set up a key for a specific query. This library will take care of the rest. So basically how it works is you use this function create query keys, then you pass in the namespace of all of the queries that will live under the subject. So you can say to those, so this will become your top level query key, which all of these will use as the base, and then you pass in the objects. So you can say get all, and since this is not a dynamic query key, so there are no query variables, then you can specify the query key to be null. And then you define the query function and all other properties that you want to define for the queries. And then for composite query keys, where they are constructed of query variables, well, it is going to be a function instead of just an object. And then you define the query variables here, you construct it here, and then to consume it, all you need to do is say to do's dot get all and then query key. And as you can see, it is a read only tuple and you get to do's, which is the namespace, and then you get get all, which is automatic automatically constructed based off the key of the object that you passed in. And for composite keys, you invoke it because you need to construct the query key. And then you say that query key. And as you can see, it is to do then get by ID and then number. Now as for performing the queries themselves, you just need to say use query to do get all and that's it. You spread all of this over and then you can override the properties and you can do whatever you want. So everything is centralized in one single place. And this in the end is the source of truth of everything. However, I wouldn't use this library. Why? Well, two reasons. First, you're creating a dependency on this library. What if the library gets outdated? Maybe Tansta Query's new version has a new API. Well, now you need to find a way to adapt this library, which is what happened to TRPC. Tansta Query released version 5, which had breaking changes, yet TRPC's adapter wasn't updated. So you were stuck with an older version. I have no idea if they updated the adapter, but I recall lasting at least three months or so. And two, it's actually really trivial to get a type safe API to deal with queries and query keys. Installing yet another dependency for this makes absolutely no sense. Anyway, what is my convention? Well, for this, I like to do this. I define a type query variables, which is an object. And then I define a base query key, which is just a constant, as you can see, it is just get all to do's. And then I define the query key type which is a read-only tuple, I pass in the type of a base query key, and the second element is the query variables. That way I have this serializable object where all of my queries will follow this convention. So just two elements as the query key. No need to have a third or fourth element. I just ensure that, well, the base query keys are unique, which they will be because I name the query key by the actual query that I'm performing. I'm not going to have another get all to this query. That would make no sense. So no need to have these nested query keys. And also, I just deal everything with a single object. Defining query variables by just their primitives and not wrapped in objects is just way more confusing. Now, what about the query itself? I create a use based query hook. And here, I return a use query. I construct the key here, so satisfies the query key, and then I define the query function and any other properties that I need. Now here, I'm using Sustan just for demonstration purposes. I have a video dedicated on this titled something along the lines of you still need Sustan if you're using Tansta query. So make sure to check it out. And this is just a way so that you can alter the query variables in any other component without the need to prop drill and whatnot. But of course, this can go depends on your use case. So normally you would just define options and then you pass them over as arguments of the hook. And then I export an object at all to do's. So I do not export this hook. I export an object that has a use query, which points to the use base query hook. And then I create a make query key. And here you can optionally pass in the query variables. Why optionally? Because you may want to do exact true or exact false. So for that, I'm going to assume the consumer just wants the top most base query key. So just get all to do's 
in a tuple. Otherwise, I construct it like this, so base query key and then query variables, which is the same as query key, like this tuple. And that's it. If I use a sustenance store, I would point it here. But in my case, for demonstration purposes, let's not use it. And then you can do whatever you want. You can either export an object like queries, or you can just consume these directly, whatever you prefer. And then all you need to do is say queries dot to do's and then get all, and then you can say use query, and then you pass in the query variables, or you can say make query key, and if I don't pass anything, I just get back the single element tuple to query key, and then you can say query client, so let me bring this over here, and then you can say invalidate queries, and then you can say queries.todos, get all, and then make query key. And if you pass in something, well, you're constructing a type safe query key. And that's it. So as you can see, there is no need to bring over another library when this is actually quite basic. Sure, it requires a little bit of boilerplate, but it has a lot of flexibility. And the benefit is you get all in one. So you get the use query. So in your components, all you need to do is say get all to do's dot and then use query. Do you have everything under the subject? And if Tanstack releases a new breaking update, well, it is not going to be a big refactor whatsoever. Since everything is already wrapped here in its pure raw form, there is nothing that sits between the Tanstack code and your code. There are no libraries interfering with anything. There are just simple wrappers that you define. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.